Welcome to the Pole Art Vault podcast episode three. So, so far we've got two episodes. Today we have a special guest as the other two episodes we had. So we've got here Muchi. He is a seductive pole artist. He is an advocate for well-being and he is also a competitive pole dancer and performer. Also a pole instructor as well. He grew up in Vietnam and he came to Sydney 10 years ago and he fell in love with the sport six and a half years ago. So let's talk more about pole and everything around pole. So please welcome Moochie. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi, How exciting. Thank you for having me. No, thanks for coming. You? Thank you. No so let's just let's literally just talk about everything poll everything about you yes. like i think it's like a good opportunity for us to just like kind of get to know each other and yes. i think also for our viewers and kind of like listeners to also get to know you as well yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. what would you like to ask? <laughs> I'm ready. so many so many so, so many, many questions yes yeah, yeah. so ready. let's start off with i guess you said that you were you obviously grew up in Vietnam mm -hmm. and then you came here 10 years ago. So like let's just talk about that. Like yeah. how what was your upbringing like? Mm -hmm. Um where were you born? You know, just all that. Um so I I am born in a very small hometown that is like 2 hours drive away from Ho Chi Minh City. You know, okay. like the um, cap economic capital um, city of Vietnam, I would say. It's not the real capital, but it's like the second biggest uh, city. So I was born to, uh, like in, at the home t in the hometown that is like two hours away. So it's called Vung Tao. It's pretty good. It's a beach city. I like it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah never heard of that place before. Yeah, so it's very small. It's very small. So right. It's like it doesn't take you long to go around so mm. I ride motorbike and then like you know I can go around the whole city probably just within 20 minutes oh really this is how small it is oh my god so yeah. like you must know all your neighbors and stuff kind of yeah, yeah. Kind of. I don't know everyone technically in Vietnam when I was back in Vietnam I'm not really um outgoing person so okay um, my dad worked in the government, so he's like the governor, so he basically has a big connection with everyone. So everyone knows my dad, my parents, but uh, I know my family, but I would say I'm not really an outgoing person at that time, so I don't, my social circle is very small. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so you came here 10 years ago. So how old were you when you moved here? I think I was almost turning 18. So I'm about, um, after I turned 17, for about like six months after, I moved to Sydney for studying abroad here. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so, so you came here for uni? Mm -hmm, I came here for studying. Mm. Also, my... My, at that time, my goal was just to try to get away from my family because, um, you know, at that time I wasn't open to my family and about my sexuality. So mm. it's just like a little bit stressful for me just to stay there and just to like, you know, be suppressed. Um, so I like, oh, I'm just going to find an excuse to go out, oh, okay. to go out my way just yeah. to be like somewhere by myself. And just be like, start discovering myself, I would guess. Because at that time, I don't really know who am I, what I like to be, mm. and up to this point, yeah. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, what made you decide to come to Australia out of like everywhere else that I think you have? Australia, an option? pretty peaceful country to, to study abroad at. It's mm. not, also, it's location wise, it's not too far away from Vietnam. Like, travel time is just about eight hours. Mm. Instead, like, if I go to America, I would say it's like gonna take like 12 hours or like even 24 hours to yeah, go back. Yeah. So, my mom and my dad, of course, doesn't want me to stay far away from home for too long. Mm, they like yeah. me to go back home for like, at that time when I come here, I go back home every six months. 
which my mom and my dad require to me to go back. Yeah, yeah. But nowadays I go like every like once a month. Oh uh, no, not once a month. Once a month, so I'm not, <laughs> so I'm not that rich. <laughs> once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Oh okay. But because of COVID, I haven't been to Vietnam last year, and doesn't look like I'm gonna be back to Vietnam this year either. So mm. it's about two years. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel like your family misses you a lot? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely my um, mummy boy, I would say. Aww. Yeah, so, um, also my dad's kind of like, you know, he likes me as well. It's not like he's prefer my sister more, but yeah, I'm like the youngest children of, the, of there, so they miss me more. So I'm, oh, okay. I would say I'm the one create more trouble, so they worry <laughs> about me more than my sister. My sister more established now, so she has her family, has a, she has a job, everything like that, so they worry, worry about her less than mm. me now. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And where is your sister based? In Vietnam. Okay. In the same home country as well. Right. Yeah, we don't normally fall far away from the tree, so so <laughs> we tend to stay around the area. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Vietnam's mindset, the children don't normally like go far away from the family. Oh, okay. We are very family oriented mm. when we raised like that. So um, even I'm here, I do miss going back to Vietnam sometimes. So I'm thinking of like, you know, um, working on making myself like a job for me back in Vietnam. Mm. If I happen to go back. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. So <clears throat> excuse me. So my, and yeah, my sister's staying in Vietnam at the moment. Oh, okay. Mm. And well, like, what was your upbringing like in Vietnam? Like, say, compared to Australia? Um, it was really different. So back in Vietnam, at that time, I was young and then always have to be like, go to school, like literally go to school every day and then all day long and then just focus on like study just to get like some type of degree or something like that. Mm. Young children don't really um, encourage to work. Um, when they were teenagers, at, um, like here, so at that time I have no idea to like go out and then apply for jobs, like go to socialize and work. So mostly just studying and like, um, well, to be honest, I don't like going to school and study. I'm not like a school kid, so <laughs> I prefer like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. Yeah, more. yeah, but we have very simple life at that time. Just study, eat, sleep, sometimes exercise, I would say. Right. Yeah. So it was very like structured very and like, structured, yeah, it was yeah. just all study. Yeah. So you were studying over the weekend and everything too. Kind of. Like weekends, we like, have times off and stuff like that. It's mm. not always studying, but like, yes, weekends, yeah, go to the relative's house mm. or like go to my grandma's house or grandpa's house, something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so like fast forward to like now, mm -hmm. like after you moved to Australia, mm -hmm. like how did your parents feel about that? Like were they happy that you were going overseas or and how were you, how were you feeling about it? Yeah, I feel like of course there are so many, there were so many mistakes throughout the time that I have made when I came here. So I find it like it taught me a good lesson. Mm. And then like shape me how how the way I become. Um, we grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to go outside my home country to experience a different lifestyle, different culture, mm. and different you know um, the way they work, the way they live, the way every other people think like that. Uh, we definitely have different thinking compared to Vietnam, like Vietnamese compared to like Western, Western thinking. So mm. um, it's good. It's great. So my mom, my dad, of course, they always miss me because they I'm far away from home yeah. by myself. Um, yeah, but they don't really complain that you know I'm being away too much. Or mm. something like that. Oh, that's good. It's so they're good. supportive of like yeah. move and everything. They they like the idea of like. The, their kids being independent mm. so it's yeah. good oh that's good mm. so what would you say like the the pros and cons about 
like living in Vietnam versus like Australia? Oh my God, it's so many. So <laughs> I would say let's focus on the uh, culture and um, the quality of living wise. Mm. Of course, like Australia is more developed country, so the quality of living, everything is just more improved yeah. compared to Vietnam. Um, but on the other hand, everything here is, is more expensive than in Vietnam, right? So mm. you gotta like work more, work your ass off, and then try to like, you know, you pay for rent, you pay for bills, and then, you know, food, everything like that. Besides that, and then it comes down to like you know expense that like you buy yourself something nice mm. and like you know treat yourself so it's all about fast paced living in Vietnam it's more chill oh, so right. it's there pros and cons in that so if you're more chill you of course you don't earn as much as you would want to, you want to be mm. um, yeah but it's also it's less stressful than here mm. yeah but I like it here in terms of like the freedom. Like you can be free doing whatever you want. Mm. You don't get people judge you. Like people still judge you doing poll and stuff like that. But you don't care. You don't kind of see those people yeah. on daily basis. Or mm. like they don't, you know, the words don't come around. It doesn't affect your work. Mm. In Vietnam, it could be affecting your work or like your, you know, your job. If like... Some people just put like bad words on your reputation. Mm, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like great. I I think pe people start changing now, but it's not changing as fast as it would it should be. Mm, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. I think it's like a, I mean, it may be an Asian thing as well, and yeah. it, it it would obviously happen in other cultures too. Yeah. But I think from an Asian perspective, yeah. it is a huge thing. You know, yeah. like losing face or like you know, it's yeah. kind of like they think it's like shame to the family or like whatever yeah. it is if like we do something different for example live like if I, people knows like the other relatives know that i'm like gay something like that mm. they can just like blame my parents and stuff like that mm. i don't care too much about it but like it's just the parents mindset they mm. still very um heavy in terms of like you know keeping face mm. i mean they in deep down, they still want me to be happy and like, you know, live my life and yeah. stuff like that. But it's also just hard for them to deal with. Yeah, with totally. With the bad words or like something, you know, people ear dropping here and there. Mm. Yeah. So like there's a keyword that I kind of picked up because you said freedom. Mm. And I feel like I, I kind of like, I just want to know more about like how, the, like the difference between you having freedom here, as you mm, said, mm. and like how maybe it might be different in Vietnam. Mm. So freedom, I would say, um, for example, I, I am, as you know, more all about seduction, uh, sexy dancing, right? So I like dancing with heels, for example, mm. and wear like, you know, a little bit skimpy outfit. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a like, little bit. If you see on my Instagram, it's all about skimpy outfit. <laughs> So um, that's the freedom of like you be able to do whatever you want and nobody cares. Mm. Like here I can go to pole class, do that stuff. And in Vietnam, everything else is just so more suppressed. It's not a popular sport either. So mm. people are still getting used to the fact of like it's a sport in t instead of just, you know, you just go to the pole and just grind on the pole and do whatever they want ridiculously. Mm. So, um, yeah, so here you get to do whatever you want. I mm. get to do whatever I want Yeah. and I don't care about people judge me or not because it's none of my business mm. and their judgment doesn't make me any, you know, smaller or any, any bigger or anything like that. So yeah, yeah. It does, it wouldn't matter. Mm. But in Vietnam, like people, some people like maybe in the hometown, they can see me. For example, I go to the studio or like they see me dancing the way I am. They mm -hmm. just immediately, they just have like a close my judgment. Mm. And then, yeah, they just affect me more. Like people going around, say stuff. And then of course, gonna go back to my family one day mm. and they're just like not comfortable with the stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. right. 
Have you had anyone like talk to you or like I don't know someone in your hometown like? Not yet. I don't feel like they have the gut to say it in front of my face, but they go around. So right. But there's. I haven't heard anything negative. I believe also if you live, um, if you treat people with positivity mm. and like you know with kindness, people are not gonna come around and bite. And like yeah. you know, attack mm-hmm. you at the back. So mm-hmm. uh, for now, not good. I would say there's none, but I hope there's you know won't be much of ne- negativity. Mm. If I happen to go back home and then I open the post studio, of course I'm just gonna stick with I do the best or like you know I feel like this is me. So mm. yeah, it's so gonna like, be fine. Do your parents know that you're gay? Yes, they know about. I think probably for six years or like seven years. Okay, so like they pretty much know since like you started yeah. whole like around that yeah, time. Yeah, around that. Okay, yeah. and then how did that come about? Like, how did they find out, or like, did they um, approach think, you, or no? I uh, they found out by accident, but because at that time I was like at the stage of like very into nail polishing. You know, nail polish. Oh, okay. So yeah. I like, you know, paint my nails and stuff like that. And then we usually video call each other. So my mom video called me at that night. And then I accidentally raised my hands up. And then they, she see the oh, nail polish. Oh, okay. She, yeah, she start questioning it. I mean, I have done a few things back in Vietnam, uh, so they questioned me at that time, which is like, you know, I used to hide my, I used to like, hide my wigs or like, you know, my, my heels. Yeah. So I'm like, at that time, I think I was into like, doing drag and like, you know, dress oh, up okay. as girls yeah. and stuff like that. So I hide the stuff and... You know, my mom always go through my stuff, <laughs> and yeah. then she found out. And this one time, I fully like do like makeup, wearing like girls' clothes and then heels, and then perform in front of like the whole school. And then that got back to my mom, and then oh my god, <laughs> it was like terrible time anyway. So um, it was fun. It was fun. So yeah. It was something like my classmates and my school remember at that time, but it's just not not, not definitely fun for my family. Yeah, <laughs> especially with my parents. I still have fun. I still think like it doesn't really a big deal, but uh-huh. it's not. Yeah, they just think it's a massive deal to be like that. Mm. So that is like the tipping point that she start questioning me. So mm, mm. I just like oh, I just I just can't hold it back anymore. It's just like just say it just express mm. my sexuality at that time yeah and they know it and then how did they react to it oh at first they thought it was like a disease so they kept like fully really yeah they fully like um contacts like because my dad has some like connection right so he asked some like of his best friend and um tried to like fly me to Thailand just to test out because you know they all about the sexuality like yeah. gay and transsexual and stuff like that see if like is there anything to cure in terms of that but it's not like you know dramatic as you think when you see in the movie like put in the straight camp or something like that <laughs> yeah. torture. it's technically it's just like go for a trip go to hospital and then have blood tests I don't know what's for but they have blood tests and then they have like some psychologies like you know just assess you know what I do what I think oh wow and then it came out it's just like it's a, it's not psychology it's not mental thing it's just like what who I am since I was young mm. it's just like more it's just stronger and stronger and then it's just you know grow as I grow up yeah so my mom and my dad eventually like give up <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wonder what those tests tip. do like I don't know I don't even know like I didn't really ask question I, <laughs> at that time I was just thinking like oh well shopping trip in Thailand so <laughs> I just go to Thailand I, like after the test like we have free times we go yeah. shopping we go eat and stuff like that so <laughs> it's just a travel trip oh my god that's so funny I know right so I'm just like I think for me I just try to find 
positive thing out of even like all things like that. Mm. So make it less stressful. Like yeah, yeah. if you think like oh it's just disease and then go to like have tests is five cure. You just think like oh it's just so negative all the time. Yeah, yeah. But it's not actually. It's not like you can see good side out of it. Mm. At least like we have more time. Um, I, well, my dad didn't go on the trip, but my mom did and my sister did. So we kind of like have a chat. Sometimes we don't really do like deep and meaningful conversation, but like we just mm. at least we say it so we can understand more. Mm. I don't think my mom and my dad fully support or fully accept now, but they on their way. I think they're on their way. Mm. So, and do you feel like you'll be able to reach that one day of yeah, like full I acceptance? Think so. I think so. It also comes down to me that I need to be more confident. And also, um, that kind of like motivate me when I start my pole career as like performers and mm-hmm. competitors. I just want to like you know um, have some type of like establishment or you know achievement for to show them that is like this is who I am. Mm-hmm. I can do this by myself. I can you know be strong, and all I need for them to do is support me like fully like you know. Don't be just, don't be like affected too much by other people's work because I find it like you can't please everyone. Like of course no. there is someone's going to be like you know not happy about what the way you are, and they just gonna find the way just like to like say something about it. Mm. So you just gonna accept that fact. It's like not no one's gonna you know be nice to you mm. and like you know um, be genuine. So. Just live your best life, and I find like living the best life is the way to be happy. You know, mm. like uh, not just earning lots of money, but it's also like you at peace with yourself. Mm. And when you at peace with yourself, everything just become you know more positive and and you know more accepting, and you will feel like. There are more doors going to open for you mm. that way. Oh know? wow! Yeah, I'm like, I'm like getting the chills just <gasps> listening to this. This is just like, I love it. Like, I love like your outlook in life. It's just like so positive, and it's all about. It's not even about like blaming other people. Like, yeah. it's about working on yourself. Yeah. So that you are at peace rather than trying to change other people. Yeah. Of course, like um, I can't ask my mom and my dad like, oh, just get over it. Like, just accept my I am being gay and I do this and stuff like that. But um, it's of course they raise not having that perspective yet. So um, it's there. They just gonna work on themselves to mm. accept that, and I'm gonna work on myself to be um, still satisfied the way that my parents want me to grow up as. But in my own way, so mm. without hurting anybody else. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe, like you can be anyone, you can do whatever, but just don't hurt other but anyone else, mm. physically or harm people, men, men, mentally or something like that. Hundred mm. percent. So I think there's no such thing as like bad job except assassin or killing people. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So yeah, I love that. Mm. So like I I didn't know that mm. that was your motivation to you know mm. do pole and stuff. Yeah. I mean obviously there must be like other motivations for yeah. you to yeah. you know want to pursue yeah. pole as a career. Yeah. So like what what other sort of like things drive you like in your career and like what you do? Yeah. So um, I'm not a re- I was not a really a sporty kid, active mm. kid. I would say so. Um, I barely go to the gym and then. I like dancing, but um, because I never expressed my interest to my mom and my dad, like, hey, can I take dancing class? I'm like really shy, so I'm like mm. even never thought of myself like going to the class by myself. Um, so when I'm here, I'm find like, oh well, nobody knows me here. I'll just give it a go, mm. and then at when I was young, I was always into like pop culture. Um, my favorite 
girl band is the Pussycat Dolls. Oh yeah! Oh they, my god! They, I totally see that. Yeah, it's <laughs> all about the seduction, sexuality, mm. sensual. So I like dancing that way. And I find pole is very something like very foreign. I never try it. I would love to give it a try. If I don't like it, I'm not gonna do it. If I like it, just keep going at it. Just you know, do as my hobby, mm. like something besides gym. And yeah, I was hooked at first, like when I first do the first class. So, like, how were you introduced to pole initially? I think I just like on the way from school from school to home, I go past the a pole studio, pole dance academy. So oh, okay. I see that it's kind of like get into my mind so many times, and I have an you know. I I'm pretty open. I'm, I don't think about like oh I'm not strong enough. I'm not flexible enough. I don't even know that you need strength and flexibility for pole dancing. I just thought like, <laughs> I, I just go to pole. You just like dancing yeah. and then go around. I don't even understand like how you need flexibility and strength for it to function. So I just give it a go. Just go for it. Like people is gonna instruct me anyway. So mm. I'm just gonna trust them. Do what they do, and then just go in with an open mind, and then give it my best on that day. Yeah. And you just fell in love with it. Yeah. I'm just like, oh wow! So I don't know that they gonna use strength for it, and I don't have strength. I'm gonna work towards it. Mm. I'm gonna get stronger anyway, and also more flexible anyway. So why not? Mm. Mm. But which studio did you go to initially? Was it PDA? Yeah, PDA. So that is like on my search, and then it's the closest to me as well. Okay. So which one is it? The, the Bondi Junction one. Oh, Bondi. Okay. Mm. So I PDA is a um. Well, Pole Dance Academy mm. is a studio in Sydney, Australia. Um, they have four different studios, and they're pretty much owned by uh, Michelle Shimmy and Maddie Sparkle, who are like the pole gods yeah, yeah. <laughs> of like the pole dancing world. The originator in... of the pole dancing. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, they're like the OGs. Like everyone looks up to them. Yeah, I yeah. was really lucky that I had Maddie as my first instructor. Oh, did you? Yeah. At that time, I don't even research about studio. Like, like I just come in. I I know this is the post studio. I'm just like sign up for the class, whichever class that is suit. Like that suited me, my timetable at that time. I just go for it, and then luckily I had many. Oh but, wow! Yeah. As your first instructor, yeah, damn. Like, the first thing I look at is her bum. It's like wow, her bum <laughs> is like so big. <laughs> I was all about like you know the image of Victoria's Secret, you know slender type. At that time, I have like no ass, nothing. I'm like okay, I'm aspire to like build myself up to be that <laughs> level. I'm still not at that level yet, but like you know, at least I'm going somewhere now. <laughs> I put on like a lot, like more weights now mm. before I'm kind of like very. Underweight. I wow. weighed fifty three kilogram at that time. Seriously, yeah. at your height, at, Wait, you're quite height. tall. So I get one centimeter taller. I would say centimeter taller, one or two. But I'm around this height when I first started. Oh wow! Yeah, so I'm very slim. Yeah, I can fit in like you know the smallest size of the super skinny jeans of um. You know, top men they have very skinny jeans. Yeah, I fit in it, uh, and now I can't even put through my calves. So <laughs> this is how that's how much I changed. Yeah, yeah. well, and you I have like a, it. you have a nice bum. Oh, thank you. Like really nice. I like I always it. look at. It, I'm like, mm. I work for it. I work for <laughs> so it. So juicy. Yeah, I work for it. I feel like, um, yeah, my mom and my sister has nice bum, nice bum, but because I assume because. They are woman, so woman type is different. Mm. My aunt, my 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 dad has no ass at all, so <laughs> I feel like at that time I was like, oh, why I in- inherit his gene instead of my mom and my my sister genes? But I find it like now you just have to work for it. Like if you want something, you can work for it. Mm. There's a the way always to like grow. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I feel like that really shows in like all your performances and also mm. like the way you instruct and mm. even just like. Watching your tricks and dancing, you dance so beautifully, and like I absolutely love your style. Okay, I've got a question. Yeah. In terms of like pole, and I guess finding your style, which mm-hmm. your style is obviously like very sexy and mm-hmm. seductive. Mm-hmm. 
how did you find your style and like what would you say to those people that are wanting to look for this style now mm. so this is a very good question it's also it's the hot it's quite a difficult issue um to find individualism like your mm. own style I still think my style is a mixture of different people's style as well but I thinking about my energy so do I want to be super slinky or do I want to be like energetic uh, playful flush flushes flirtatious um, in through my performance so mm. in my performance I want like I have engaged I have the you know audience engagement in there and also I want to have fun and dance to the song that I like the most so I usually uh, listen to the lyrics of the song the how how the song is like the meaning of the song and I try to translate that through my performance I think myself as like a character I would say mm. so I I always wanted to be like you know a superstar like you know singer or something like that you know like yeah. when you are a singer you are the main star of the stage and mm -hmm. everyone else is just like you know surround you or support yeah. your performance so I was thinking of that makes like empower myself to be that um, uh, it's always okay to be uh, like somebody else when you first started because of course you try to figure out the way you move how which way you move better which way you don't really like moving at all mm. it's also it's your body um, and eventually you can figure out by um, question yourself what do you want to translate your performance in front of audience do you want to be like a sexy person or do you want to be like tricks person like smashing out like dynamic moves all the time or super flexible person mm. or like you dance you want to like um you know grab the attention of the audience mm. or do you want just to like dance for yourself mm. you know? Love it's that. a different way of like you know doing it I prefer dancing for my audience also dancing for myself but like I always enjoy dancing for myself anyway yeah either way I dance I like doing it but I like to see like okay this is how I can get people's like watching me more than just like you know take my eyes take their eyes off my my dance for just one split second something mm. like that so I like dancing very high energy song but my body just like moving slow so right. my my coordination everything it just works better when I dance slower so mm. I go for like slow and flirtatious dance and mm -hmm. it's always like being seductive being like okay I dance for my partner my imaginary partner standing in front of me then so mm. I dance for him or you can dance for her or something like that yeah as well. I love that yeah. I, I think it's really important to put yourself in like a imaginary situation so that yeah. you feel like you're in it and like yeah in return mm. it's kind of like your audience will kind of like get yeah. into your kind of like little world that mm. you pretty much created in mm. your head right yeah it's also a help sometimes I know it's I'm all about being true to you being true self but sometimes mm. it's good to have an what do you call that word like people put on a persona is that persona? Like a, yeah persona like persona, a character a character for mm. them to play it off as well so it's good to be that also yeah totally yeah. Mm. but I feel like because you said um you know you want to you I think you want to look for like if you want to dance dynamically or like you mm. want to dance for like your audience and stuff like that mm. I feel like you literally nail everything I try to I try to because it's just like I find it it's just boring to just stand one pace mm. so sometimes I like it I mostly like it dancing slow but I sometimes I'm just like okay I gotta be fast for this one so yeah just see the way always try to listen to the music mm. and work on the musicality musicality is your friend to mm -hmm. uh, build a performance so if the song happens to be energetic you have to go for energetic Way. Mm. and if the song is slow you try to capture that mm. yeah and just oh i don't know i, I love your stage performance oh, and i just you. feel like 
you like especially like this is Mr. Paul like it was just like you were on the bed and like oh. you were in like in your world and then you like next next minute you're like like pumping out all this like dynamic moves it's yeah. just like whoa like I did not expect that because yeah. it's like you have like this slinky kind of like really sexy mode yeah and then next minute you're like pumping out all this dynamic moves mm. so it's like I feel like I really see all that hard work that you put in yeah on stage yeah and like right now like you're working on you know gymnastics yeah. and you're also you just did your fungi class with Lorna shout <laughs> yeah. out to Lorna hi Lorna Lorna's amazing you're watching yeah she's like a static queen yeah in Sydney she is, so yeah. she's so good she's so good like I don't think I would get I never think I would like do fungi before so it's just uh, something just like so strenuous so you know so dynamic mm. but she break it down really very good and right. have, like understanding as well and I find like Paul helped me to understand how body move and like you know what muscles you use and like how in terms of gravity wise mm. but it's also it helps me to like go for other class like the other sports like gymnastic um, just to learn how to be more you know everything move together mm. and then you do it dynamically and you can have like you know gravity defined sport yeah and yeah so i would love to like have get myself into dance class just normal dance class because i find like you can focus on more on your dance movement mm. and that's dance movement gonna help you build up your style as well so mm -hmm. i find uh, for paul if you just like into just paul um would i would recommend do different teachers class and different genre um we're very lucky like in just paul right now we have different teachers teaching different type of dance mm -hmm. so students can experience different ways of like the dance and a different style mm. so just do lots of it and then you know practice practice and practice totally yeah, yeah like just put on a song dance sometimes it's probably most of the time it's gonna feel super awkward like you know mm. like why my body moving this way my body mm -hmm. moving that way but just let it go and just you know flow with it mm. i mean obviously 100 percent, as you said like in the beginning mm. you will feel awkward doing anything mm. you know mm. like not just dance like to in be honest now when sometimes when i Correct myself like I'm like oh shit this is so awkward when I move this way mm -hmm. and on. if I learn something new that I saw from you know internet I'm like oh wow how can people move like this mm. I'm like super awkward but like you just have to like keep going work it out and then if you don't get this day leave it a rest for a few time a few days and then come back to it next time mm. yeah yeah hundred like, percent not always you can get anything at first go it's always good to feel it you get it at first go mm -hmm. but i would say sometimes students can be like defeated or discouraged when they don't get it straight away or like mm -hmm. try so many times the first time at the first lesson but yeah i always say to them like just keep going just practice at least now you know the few tips and tricks to do it yeah just keep going because sometimes your body needs time to adapt. Mm, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, like, who would you say like your pole inspirations are? I love, 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 love Sarah Jade. Mm. She's in. Uh, she's American pole dancer. Mm -hmm. Um, her style is very, very sexy. Yeah. I love her flexibility. Oh my god, her leg flexibility, her back flex. I mean, everything is just so good. Like, mm. I aspire to be her one day. I agree. Yeah. I have, like, other pole artists that I admire as well. Like, I see good things in everyone. Mm. Like, even though sometimes, right, in my, my students, I can see them, oh, wow, they did this one's really good. Like, mm. when I first started, I can't never get this one like they did before. Mm. But they did really well. So, I aspire, they, they always have, like, strength for you mean for me to look at and I, yeah, I, I admire sure. them to like to do it yeah so I find every pole dancers I encounter in my life through person or through online I find them are very good mm. but the most favorite person I would say is Sarah J and Felix Kane 
Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, they just can't her. She's amazing. She. She's like originator of everything. So, <laughs> so yeah, she's my favorite. Mm. Um, but I find I can achieve um, to the level of Sarah J. <laughs> yeah. So you think that Felix Kane is just like. Somewhere out there. It's like, she's not even human. <laughs> yeah, she's not even human. It's just yeah. something like, I look up to it, but I don't know if I can work myself towards yeah. it. Yeah. Because I feel like she does so much training. Yeah. And like, she's yeah. obviously, you know, have a very long background in yeah. like ballet and yeah. stuff as well. Yeah, when you were studying young as a gymnastic or dancer as young, you have the advantage of knowing the movement, everything mm. that just come more natural to you. And your body endurance is just much better. Mm, for sure. So, like, if you were to give some advice to, mm -hmm. like, our, like, beginner mm -hmm. dancers or yeah. pole artists out there, like, what would be that one advice you kind of knew before you started? Mm, so, I would say practice and, you know, Take your time. You don't have to, you know, stress too much about I have to get this today mm. or I have to get this like the first go. Like it takes time. Everybody is different. Somebody can get one move straight away, but there are the moves that they frustrated and then it can be opposite as you are. So always um, don't don't compare yourself to other in the negative way. You, you can compare yourself to others in the positive way. Like I want to be as good as her one day. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna work towards it. But if you like it as a hobby, um, yeah, don't take it take it easy. Don't stress your body too much. We do like we are athletes here. We are performers here. We always have to work um, towards like something a bigger goal. But if you do as hobby, just like gym, you do it for stress relief. Then have fun, give it your best, and then always try it again next time whenever you can. This um, this platform is help um, is very beneficial because you can you know redo the class whenever you can. Mm. So. Um, before when I go to physical class, right? So I have to pay extra money for my for my extra class to do the same thing over and over. Mm. You technically this one you get the benefits of you pay for the same price, but you can repeat the class as many times as possible. Yeah. And I find it the more you repeat, the more you do over and over, you're gonna perfect it more and you're gonna have a stronger foundation. Mm. Yeah. For sure, hundred percent. Always having a strong foundation for mm -hmm. everything, and it's gonna, you, it's gonna help you in a long way, in the long, long run. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. So, if you were to describe mm -hmm. pole mm -hmm. in one word, what would it be? Fun. Fun. Huh? Very fun. Mm. Yeah, it's always interesting um, to learn new stuff, and then there's always something new for you to learn. And mm. it's always there is like the room to grow, so you will find different things for you to like improve one by one at a time. So mm. it's fun to discover yourself. It's fun to discover Paul, and it's fun to know that my body can do this, mm. which you don't think like your body can do it. Like to be honest, if I say seven years ago, I would climb up on the pole and then do a chase split. I wouldn't like. <laughs> Think of You'll be like, like that. That's crazy. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> totally crazy. Yeah. I don't even know that I can climb. Um, with Paul, right? Like before Paul, I can't even do one push-ups. Oh wow. So, yeah. Like one push-up, pull-ups. I can't even like. I just like hang there and just can't even pull-ups. Yeah. I literally have no muscle engagement whatsoever. Mm. And then with Paul, like. Everything just like more understanding, like you have a better understanding of how body moves, how the what is the cap capability cap capability? capability capability of your body. Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, now you're doing fongies, now you're doing all these like crazy yeah. tricks. Yeah. It's, wow, that yeah. transformation. It always looks like okay, it's like nearly impossible to for us to do it, but. Mm. Um, you know, I work my way up towards this point and I always want to like, work up more as well. So I'm glad like all the things I have worked 
it has helped me to achieve something new as well so mm. it's always like it's not you just gonna go for it and and you know like just go in it and try it like the first time and you get it mm. it's like i find it like if i don't get it and i have more other aspect to work on mm. i pause that and then i work on the things that i can work faster towards that mm. and then when i get that perfected or i and you know improve that and i go for something a little bit bigger mm. like bigger and bigger at the time yeah. i don't come from a background of gymnastic or dancer or anything like that i do yo i did yoga when i was 16 like for a year mm -hmm. i guess that helped me achieve my flexibility a bit faster but yeah so i start from scratch i would say so mm. i find it like you know I grow with pole dancing as I go. Love that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. So inspirational. Like I feel like you. I just I love your energy. Like I love your vibe. I love like your stage performance and like your flexibility. Oh, thank I love you everything. Too. I thank literally you. everything. I love everything about. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. You are a fabulous pole dancer as well. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God! Stop it! Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, cannot. She is. She is a fabulous pole dancer. <laughs> I like the way she danced, very energy energetic. I would love to be that energy. I can be energetic, but only for stage. But uh. with like, you know, general dancing, I don't, you know, go for that because I find it's more, ti it's more tiring. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You kind of regret like calling to like a fast routine or something later But it's later good. On. People enjoy dancing fast as well. Mm. Mm. I find it's like less boring than dancing slow. Uh. I mean, depends. I think it's just preference. Like mm. some people just love, you know, sl dancing slow, which is really hard too. Yeah. Like dancing slow is so hard. Like yeah, sometimes you gotta control think that... your lines, everything like that. Yeah. Looks like the decent way, like different way. Like you can't just like do it halfway and then stop. No. Like I mean, it looks kind of like easy. Yeah. But it's. I think slow dancing is like way harder. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different body control. Yeah. Yeah. And always uh, because for me, I com I thrive for competing for other stuff more. Mm. So for me, I find it like I just try to work my way for be an all rounder than mm -hmm. just be just fit fit in the box of like you're just being flexible. You're not being dynamic enough, or mm. you're just being dynamic without being flex flexible or something like that. So yeah. Wow. Long way to go, but yeah, I'm happy to at where I am. Mm. And always for room to to grow more. Yeah, I mean it's always about progress, right? Because yeah. like I really I always say that there's no such thing as like being perfect. Mm. Like there's the perfection just doesn't exist. Yeah, it's like it when you exist. feel like you've reached that perfection, like if say for example, you'll be like, okay, if I am able to achieve the Rainbow Marchenko, then that's when you know I'm a perfect pole dancer. Yeah. Like. It doesn't exist. Like yeah. once you achieve that, you want more. Yeah, you always want. So more. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's a good sport. But always um, listen to yourself also because pole is quite a um, very um, demanding sport mm. for your body. So um, when you become more advanced level, it can hurt your body more. Mm. So uh, for me, right, something I would recommend is always do the strengthening exercise and warm up exercise besides just stretching because stretching is help for your flexibility wise but if your muscles are not stabilized or less strong enough to encounter or let balance out with the flexibility mm. it can hurt yourself also and that gonna create a step back for you and you don't want a step back if you you know like pause like for six months because of your back or something like that yeah totally yeah all right, so like I think we should wrap up our little podcast show, but before that, mm -hmm. let's briefly just talk about like your business you're working on. Uh, well, so I'm working towards the, um, you know, owning a clothing line. So Exciting. Clothing line, active clothing line with Astral. So she's a pole dancer as well. So uh, we are working towards that. Hopefully it's going to happen soon. So 
who knows because of COVID, everything like that. And it's a long process for yeah. figure out what our style or our, what our brand is going to be. It's a hard work, so mm-hmm. I admire everyone doing that business. So yeah, and also hopefully I can do more makeups because I'm into makeup as well. So yeah. I'm a freelance makeup artist. So um, yeah. Hopefully, I can pick up more job or something. Like that. I love working, so especially working on the field that, you know, I don't feel like I'm working, but mm. I'm more enjoy the process more. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And mm. that's what's so rewarding about you know being a pole instructor, right? Because mm. it's like your passion. You know, you obviously you know you love doing makeup, mm-hmm. so you freelance makeup, mm. and then you know working teaching on- as well. It's all yeah. about the great creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So. Thank you so much you for joining for me. me on this. It's my pleasure. So if my viewers or listeners want mm-hmm. to find you mm-hmm. on any of our socials, then mm-hmm. where can they find you? Uh, well, you can find me on Instagram. I'll be on Instagram most of the time <laughs> at Miss Muchi. Miss is the short one, M-S. Muchi with an M, like Gucci, but Muchi. <laughs> So I, I usually that. say that. Some people say Muji, Muzi, Muji, something like that. So it's like no it's Muchi. Muchi <laughs> with like Gucci but with an M. Yeah. So Love you can that. find me on that handle. I might I might change the miss thing because I used to do it in because I might think of myself doing track, but mm. I'm not into like doing like drag myself anymore. So okay. Am I changing something? Mm-hmm. But it's still Muji. It's going to be still the same Muji. Luckily, haven't heard anyone have the same name yet. No. So, I haven't either. Yeah, so I better trademark it. You should. <laughs> I should. I should. So no one use my name. Anyway. Yeah. It's actually, it's not original name. I'm just like, oh, my name is Min and I like Gucci. At that time, it's just like, merge them together <laughs> into Muji. I like five kids. I love that. So I find it's like, okay, it's going to stick with me yeah. for a while. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So so I guess that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for listening in or watching. I guess I shall see you in the next episode. I'll be uploading weekly. So make sure you tuned in to our next podcast. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.